Hello Eye Tracking Community. My name is Michael and in this video we will talk about what metrics do you want to analyze. This video is the second part of our series Why do you want to conduct an eye tracking experiment? What metrics do you want to analyze? And how the experiment will look like. In the first part of this series we have talked about why do you want to conduct an eye tracking experiment. In this video we will match now your reasons with the metrics. The basic concept of an experiment is the following. We manipulate the independent variables and we try to control the co-founding variables as best as we can. This is not only true for user experiments. This process is being used in almost every scientific experiment. And this approach is called controlled user experiment. Most times the goal is to find correlations between the eye movements and other information. Correlation means we are looking for the relationship between two or more variables. In a user experiment we can record different information about the participants. There is the eye tracking data and all the information we can derive from that. But there's also some information from biometric sensors. We have information about the participants, so like age, gender, experience. We have information about the environment and about the context. So for example, from logging files. So the possibilities are endless here. But let's come back now to eye tracking and to the question, what metrics do you want to analyze? When we're looking into the literature, we will find many different metrics we can analyze. So, for example, the total gaze duration and the normalized gaze duration, the average gaze duration, maximum and minimum gaze duration, and the gaze count, the time to first fixation gazed at by time, the fixation count, the saccade count, the average fixation duration, the average saccade duration, the average saccade length, the fixation rate, the fixation saccade time ratio, the scan path length, the scan path duration, the scan path area and the AOI transition rate. Just to name a selection out of the uh, reference literature here. The important point here is you have to make a decision which subsection of all these possible metrics you want to analyze after recording your eye movements. And for defining this subsection it is very important to know why you want to conduct your eye tracking experiment. Based on the answer or the answers why you want to conduct your eye tracking experiment are the analysis methods you want to use or you have to use for analyzing your data. Because for example some statistical methods need a specific distribution of the data. So for example there are some statistic tests which require a Gaussian or normal distribution of your recorded data. And for checking if there is a normal distribution of your data, you have to insert some special statistical tests to find out if there is a normal distribution or not before you go into the analysis with your further with your statistical methods. Another aspect is which metrics are delivered in a good quality from the experiment. So for example you find out that only gaze points are recorded in a good quality and for whatever reasons the fixation detection algorithm is not working correctly and you cannot compute fixations based on the gaze points. If this is the case you have to know that gaze points do not represent the visual perception of a scene. They represent the way the hardware is measuring, is recording 
our eye movements, then you have to ask yourself, can I or do I want to continue with this data so that I'm only using gaze points as the basic metric, so I cannot go further or cannot analyze in detail fixation metrics, or do I have to change the experimental setup or the procedure of the experiment. But from my experience, the best solution is to create a comprehensive data foundation right during the experiment. And to record as many different data types as possible already during the experiment. And that's why it is so important to know the reasons of your eye tracking experiment and the restrictions of your experiment. These reasons and the restrictions due to the number of participants, the hardware setup or the time you can invest in your eye tracking experiment give you the framework for your data quality and the metrics you can and you want to analyze afterwards. Don't be afraid too much about all the challenges here. From my experience, there are few points which you have really to take into account for generating data in a good quality and for conducting a very well eye tracking experiment. Please have a look at one of our previous videos about uh, gaze points, saccades and scan paths for a short introduction into these basic metrics and about all the other metrics which I've shown you here a minute ago we will do a separated video in this channel. We have talked about what metrics you want to analyze and in the next video we will talk about how the experiment will look like and how you can design the procedure of your experiment based on your reasons and the selection of the metrics.